Good morning. Thank you for asking a rural frontier northeastern Oregon County to share work in progress on health transformation. We kind of had a confluence of factors come into play why we started our care team and school-based wellness hubs. We had increasing absenteeism, we had teachers not staying, we had health indicators falling, and we had a lack of money. So many agencies and organizations in Morrow County have interactions with and become aware of individuals with unmet health needs. Often these needs are outside the scope of any given agency or beyond their available resources to address that need. We recognize that. So Morrow County is one of 12 counties included in the Eastern Oregon Coordinated Care Organization. It's the largest geographical CCO in Oregon. Each county has a local community advisory county committee. Morrow County's LCAC is focused on bringing better health, better care, and lower costs to Morrow County residents. Through this, partnerships were established at the LCAC. A transformational system change became possible. We actually thought we should be doing something to change the way people lived, the way they were educated. On this committee, we had private business, we had Morrow County government, we had public health, we had school districts, and we had um, a lot of, we had Department of Human Services, we had Umatilla Morrow County Healthy Head Start, all kinds of things that were coming together to do our community health assessment and be on our LCAC. We were amazed, and Morrow County Public Health chairs this LCAC. So, by sharing resources and building partnerships, the school wellness hubs brings health care and prevention into Morrow County schools. By utilizing existing county kind of services, it also helps maintain those services and builds better health care and health equity across for all county residents. So the Morrow County Care Team prioritizes the 0 to 21 population and their families all of the population of this, of this age. Student and families are presented with wraparound services and keep students in schools. Services include physical, mental health, and social determinants of health. Here is a snapshot of our Morrow County schools. As you can see, we have a diversity in population. In fact, we are a county that the minority is the majority in the state of Oregon. So we have diversity in cultures, ethnicities, languages, socioeconomics, and geographical diversity. We have a more traditional, long-time population in the south end, a newer, uh, more moving population in the north end. But all of our community partners agree on wanting a healthier future for residents. A better and healthy future depends on educational attainment. So schools. Everybody wanted something. Employers wanted a future workforce. Schools wanted regular attendance. Public health wanted better health outcomes, healthier populations, and our county government wanted to spend less money. So we came together and we, we came and we used all of those things to build a system. So schools wanted students in school and learning. And Attendance is a major focus for the care team. We, we, public health wanted to know why aren't they coming to school? How do we fix that? How do we look upstream? Schools were like, I don't care. Just get them in school. And we said, fine, we'll do that. Let us in. So we focus on the mobile students. And if you see up here, a mobile student is the irregular attender. And it's really interesting. They enter school between July 1st and May 1st. Excuse me. They are students who attend more than one school between July 1st and May 1st, enter the Oregon public education system after October 1st, and exit the Oregon education system before May 2nd without earning a diploma or a certificate. And they had significant gaps in enrollment in 10 consecutive days. We see a lot of that. So, the Morrow County Superintendent created this slide to demonstrate the importance of braiding funds to create a wraparound system. 
integration of private and government partnerships for community health transformation at the county level. This slide also shows the commitment to the key P5 start to kindergarten readiness, as well as to graduation and workforce readiness. Care and wraparound services are available to anyone in this target group through community partner referrals or self-referrals. So look at the services provided and the contributions of funding from community partnerships. So we have a workforce coordinator on the care team and are in the schools. All of this is school-based. We have SROs in every school. We have care coordinators in every school, which are really the connective tissue to all the referrals and um, needed resources. And we have care RNs in every school. We can't afford uh, school-based health centers. We'd really like them, so, but we can't afford them. So this is our brand of it. We have counseling counselors in every school um, we have an early childhood coordinator for doing community outreach and bringing kids into the public system. We now have, we're going to have a kindergarten through sixth grade day behavior room for kids that are having problems in class. We don't want to send them home. We want to keep them in school. We want to educate them. We have a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation grant that partnered with Advantage Dental and the University of Washington and they come into the schools and they screen and provide dental sealants on every kid in grade schools. And the care team, what really sells the care team is that we do, we come in and we help them. The teachers and the superintendents, nobody has to do any work. We help them do the uh, billing, we help them do the charting, we help them do the referrals. So if a kid needs more um, extensive dental work, they make a referral to us, we call their parents, we make plans for transportation, if they don't have health insurance, we provide that, we sign them up, we do it all. We, it's kind of a public health focus. We do wraparound services. We're not leaving anything out. If we go to their home and the mom's ill, we get her into the doctor. We provide the transportation. If there's not enough food in the family, we then scour community resources. We get them TANF, we get them food stamps, we take them to the food banks. We're doing all of those things because we need them to stay in school and break this cycle and, and become taxpayers and fund my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> right, <all right. laughs> yeah. So some of our community partners up here, of course, is the Morrow County School District General Fund. They put a lot of money into this program paying for services. We also have Head Start. We have GOBI and uh, EOCCO. So GOBI is our Greater Oregon Behavioral Health, and EOCCO is the CCO of our 12 counties, and they are pretty committed to this. We have the Morrow, Port of Morrow, which is the largest employer in Morrow County. They put money in. They also pay for the Workforce Training Center, and then Blue Mountain Community College also brings classes to there. So we're not just interested in a handoff here, here, here. We want the lifespan to change. And we need to do that because these are our neighbors. They are, we meet them in the grocery store. We see them. We're all over together. So, and Morrow County government is also committed to this. So this is the target, this is the metrics that we use that Janet was talking about. And this, and since we're kind of poor, we don't have teams to come in and delve into data and things, so we have to rely on others. And if you look at it, Morrow County Local Advisory Council has worked to develop new health care partnerships and pathways to deliver transformational health care access across to county residents. The care RNs and care coordinators are embedded within the school environment. The care coordinators assist with dental screening, silence, vision screenings, access to follow-up exams, and immunizations. The care RNs provide direct care and health education in the school setting. Because of these partnerships that were developed in the LCAC, the care team is able to connect student and families to health care services in our community, thereby impacting many EO, CCSO incentive measures and enhancing local access to critical care and prevention services. 
So if you see that, our immunizations, we met that target. Well, we didn't. In the school we did, but we we're kind of upset that we only had three to go. But dental sealants and on permanent molars, school immunization exclusions in 2016, 120 school exclusion letters went out. And that year we gave 450 in-school immunizations. In 2017, we worked on that and only 12 letters went out. So according to the OHA immunization program press release in May 2018, Morrow County K through 12 grade non-medical immunization exemptions are the lowest in the state at 1.1%. Kindergarten non-medical exemptions are at 1.5%. So our care team in physical and mental health encounters was 2,441 and, and social determinants was 457. So thank you. Yes. Can we get back to that last slide? Just one quick clarification. This is, right. This is a civilian audience. It's not an Oregon audience. But I just want to, the incentive measures are what, what people get paid for with the Medicaid that, that, Jan, that Janet said. So one of the things I think is really important about this all-in method, the Eastern Oregon CCO targets, they will get incentives more for that. But if you see that it, like, all boats are rising here because of that. It becomes a community cultural change so that even the non-Medicaid kids and the, are, we're getting better results and health outcome results from this work. Okay, and I know you got a lot of questions. Hold those questions. We're gonna break for lunch. Lena, you wanna? Lunch is available for speakers and members of the round table next door and for everyone else. We'll see you back at 1.30. Thank you. Sorry.